Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I am Rider of Dinosaurs. Today's video is going to be about Nathan Roberts and his disdain for the Coriolis effect. As always, before we get started, a big thank you to my Patreons and a big welcome to my new Patreon, Recovering Alabamian. Sun on a baseball field. That direction, that way, is uh... Having troubles already? So early in your video? So which one is it? North? South? East? West? Is the East? Finally! Took your sweet time! This direction that way is the West. We got North back here, we got South that way. And all we have to go on is your word, Nathan. And honestly, from my perspective, that's not enough. Evidence! Where is your evidence? So I'm hitting it North now. If we were truly spinning on our axis at over a thousand miles per hour, Oh, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Rotation is not measured by miles per hour. It's measured by rotations per minute. You know, RPMs. Can't you get that through your thick skull? Doesn't matter how many times we say it, you keep going back to the same thing. Or is it necessary to nail it to your forehead? That alone should uh, um, allow for the ball when I hit it straight up into the air without really any wind uh, catching it or any spin of the baseball if it's just straight in a straight spin explain one thing to me what is a straight spin and didn't you say that the ball shouldn't be spinning then what should happen is that the ball should land like way over that way to the west why would it although the Coriolis effect would affect the ball's trajectory the actual deviation is so small you wouldn't even notice it where is your math to tell us and to show us that it should land way up in the west. All this ridiculous math that they put in here doesn't even make any sense. Oh yeah, I forgot. Math is scary. If there is no wind coming from the east pushing anything towards the west, the ball should not go anywhere but straight. You can't seem to conceive the idea that the atmosphere is rotating with the whole planet. So this is an example of a moving vehicle while someone jumps up and without being in a closed system. Can you explain how this happens? Okay, wait, like she should go outside of the baseball field. Okay, when I hit a high enough pop-up. Let's see if that happens, okay? Let's, let's check it out and see if, see if the 10 and eight year old have to know anything about Coriolis in order to figure out how to catch a baseball. Right. Oh, Nathan, that's completely irrelevant. You know nothing about electronics, on how computers work, on how the internet has been set up, yet you are making a video and uploading it to YouTube. You don't have to know about things to be able to do them, as long as you have the tools that allow you to do it, and you know how to work those tools. Straight north. And while I hit it way over his head, it did not land out of the field. To the west you know why because it was not supposed to your whole idea of how coriolis works tells me that you know absolutely nothing how coriolis works but let's hear your explanation because the earth is not spinning ready that's it nathan because the earth is not spinning nah -ha. is that it is that your whole argument oh dear oh dear nathan and for clarification, the cut you saw, I didn't do it. It's in his original video. I'll put a link in the description for it. In fact, that one had a slight spin on it this way. And it pushed the ball that way just because the spin of the ball interacting with the air. And so it spiraled a little bit that way. And that proves what, Nathan? Regarding what we're talking about, that proves absolutely nothing didn't end up that way and why would it we never said it did oh let me guess your answer because the earth is not spinning because that's how things work right Nathan if you repeat something enough times it becomes reality right think to yourself there's no place like home there's no place like home there's, there's no, no place like home Here we go. 
that one's really high. And it just landed right over here. Right over there. Tweet. These are simple tests, guys. You really have to, to be willfully ignorant to choose not to believe your God-given senses. I actually love when flirts say these kind of things. Trust your senses. Let me give you an example of why you should not trust your senses 100%. This video comes from the YouTube channel Camera Obscura and World of Illusions. There will be a link in the description for this channel. As you can see, the woman on the left is much, much smaller than the man on the right. Right? Let's roll the video and see what happens when they switch sides. Now she's bigger and he's smaller. How did that happen? This is just a quick example to show you that we can't trust our senses 100%. Contrary to flirt beliefs, you can't trust your senses 100%. While you're on the road, can you tell the difference when you're driving 60 miles per hour and 65 miles per hour? Of course you can't, unless you have an instrument that tells you. So your senses work up to a point, but they can be fooled. If you want to look it up, this particular illusion is called Ames Room. The earth is stationary and flat. There's a dome over our head. The Bible testifies to that. Your reality testifies to that. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Repetition is a sign of a cult. Have you thought about that? Of course you have. You're running one. And now, just for the fun of it, and because flirts love to quote mine, let me quote mine you. Yeah, I'm not spinning. Yep, not happening. Complete asinine assessment. You know you're spinning. Likewise manner. On the ground beneath your very feet, you know you're spinning. I hope you enjoyed this little satire. It was fun to make and really, really easy. And this is all I have for you today. I'll see you in my next video. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell button. And if you want to support me further, consider following me on Twitter, buying a t-shirt, or become one of my Patreons. The links will be in the description.